in life, we all strive to have an increased well-being. We all strive to be happy. We all need to um, ascribe to flourish in our lives, whether it be personally, academically, or professionally. In today's research, we're going to be talking about optimal learning using technology, enhancing collaboration and social networking among young and old students. We, some of the topics for discussion is going to be based on studying the model, the model being Martin Seligman's PERMA theory, which is the well-being or happiness theory. These dimensions of the well-being theory are comprised of positive emotions, engagement, uh, positive relationships, having meaning, and also achievement or accomplishment. We are going to be discussing how these, how various technological platforms are in support of this theoretical framework, how it contributes to optimal learning, and how it contributes to the role of collaboration and fostering social networking. We're also going to um, point out uh, various evidence, um, some of which still remains to be unclear, to show evidence as to learning with technology. We're going to show future reference, future suggestions and recommendations and also limitations in reference to this research. And we're going to conclude. For the introduction, again, a lot of individuals, many humans strive to have an increased well-being where they rather engage in activities and be involved in situations that presents low cost and low barriers, whereas it increases their positive moves, their positive attitude. When it comes to learning, same concept. Students and teachers want to, want to be engaged in um, academic activities that is mentally stimulating, positively stimulating, emotionally stimulating, and even physically stimulating, where it increases their overall well-being and increases their positive emotions. It contributes to their um, academic experiences and learning outcomes where they're more likely to be positive. It, learning with communication technologies has also expanded the range of allowing individuals to communicate with one another. It has contributed to increased student-student um, dyadic relationships, uh, student-teacher dyadic relationships. It has opened the door for uh, collaboration where students and students can collaborate with um, those in the same vicinity as well as those um, students that are internationally to where it provides group thinking activities, group test activities, and just like coming together and sharing thoughts and ideas. It has opened the door for social networking tour. It has increased the potential for students to socialize themselves with one another, whether it be in online or in person, we engage in socialize themselves with other students. Learning has also increased um, has also does also has the potential to increase digital literary skills, mainly when students and teachers are trained in the learning platforms that they are provided. For the Martin Seligman's well-being theory, the Martin Seligman's well-being theory is essentially based on the positive aspect of emotions, engagements, relationships, and um, academic achievement or any kind of achievement, whether it be personal. Um, like being professional or academically, and also trying to have some uh, meaning in life and engage in positive, stimulating things to where you find your flow. This does not necessarily restrict to K through 12, as we're in higher education. There is also um, senior adults who engage in learning with technology. Um, and in reference to this, it may be due to uh, senior adults not being able to store the same amount of information as young cohorts, whatever, sometimes the use of technology can be a little bit cumbersome. Older generations are more likely to face physical frailties and cognitive frailties and not being able to store large amounts of information. For the PERMA model, the PERMA model, again, is comprised of positive emotions, uh, meaning and having a purposeful existence, uh, relationships, developing and uh, sustaining authentic connections and ties having a sense of achievement, which is essentially important when it comes to engaging in a, or having an academic experience. And also for the engagement, meaning uh, finding flow. Advantages of learning with technology for the purposes of this, uh, the positive emotions. Uh, when you learn with technology for the purposes of collaboration and social networking, it does have the tendency to increase the moods of the uh, students as well as teachers. It increases their um, academic satisfaction. satisfaction. 
um, happiness, it, it, it increases their ability to be more optimistic. However, this does not necessarily mean that technology played a crucial role in it, but it did play some part in it. For the engagement aspect, when a students want to find a sense of flow, it can result in them becoming uh, one with the um, tasks that they are performing. For the relationship aspect, using technology for the purposes of collaboration and communication, as well as socializing oneself, has contributed to the positive relationships between students and teachers, whether these relationships be long-term or short-term. It allows them to live up to their full potential, uh, step outside of the box and see what they see what they are capable of. Using technology has also provided them with the opportunity to be uh, prepared for the future, whereas we live in a tech technologically driven world, they're going to have to use some sort of technology. So why not start now? Uh, for the achievement, it does increase the academic achievement or it can increase the academic achievement. It can increase the outcome. It can also contribute to uh, good grades, whereas it does not, grades does not necessarily prove that students have learned with technology. Some of the disadvantages of using technology for the purposes of collaboration and social networking is when students are not provided with the adequate training. If they're denied accessibility to various resources and materials, it could, it could potentially uh, result in negative moves, negative attitudes. It can make the learning experience um, unpleasurable and they can have um, pessimistic attitudes. Another aspect of using technology to where it, if it's used in excess, it can result in cognitive or information overloads. For the engagement, again, if they're not provided with uh, quality connections or if they're not provided with quality materials, it can result in a social disconnect to where they're now they're less likely to engage in the technology for the purposes of collaboration and uh, socializing oneself when they don't have access to various technologies or poor broadband connections or no internet access it can result in poor um, grades as well as drop dropout and attrition rates and also disassociation for optimal learning with platforms when the technology technological platforms are all inclusive meaning for individuals of all age groups, all demographic backgrounds, and all individuals per se, it can make the learning experience so much better. This is particularly true when it comes to senior adults, and particularly when senior adults are in the academic setting, it, it allows them the opportunity to learn the technology to where it is age friendly, it is user friendly, the screens and buttons are not that um, difficult to navigate, so they are able to develop a certain level of patience when it comes to using these technologies. Using these various technologies does not necessarily mean that it should take a teacher's approach, whereas teachers are the primary um, vanguards that teaches the students how to use the various technology. Um, so they should take a student-centered approach as well. Equity to resources can also be a play a leading role in reference to uh, establishing an optimal learning experience. Uh, it increases the ability to collaborate with students, um, whether they are in the same vicinity or worldwide. It allows them the opportunity to increase their social wealth or social enrichment. It also allows them to increase their academic experiences where they are able to engage in learning with technology or collaborating and communicating with others um, within the academic setting or those external. Um, and it, it contributes to personal growth and can, it, it can also contribute to self-actualization. So your adults, they continue to learn. Um, so in, in, when they have the opportunity to learn mainly with technology where it can help increase their cognitive health and crystallize intelligence. It can increase their digital literacy skills. It can also increase their personal well-being um, and as well as um, increase their social enrichment and their level of education as well. Some of the roles for collaboration using mobile smartphone technologies is based on establishing uh, quality and authentic student-student and teacher-student dynamic relations. Using, using collaborative mobile smartphone technologies uh, allows students to uh, build a sense of community, make them feel as though they are part of a group, make them feel a sense of connectedness, feel a sense of belongingness. For senior adults, when they are taught 
or provided with the necessary resources and skills, it can increase their happiness, their lifelong satisfaction, as well as life longevity. And collaboration allows for joint problem solving skills. It, be, it builds team playing skills to where they are more likely to become team players as they get older. Um, group thinking skills, it increases uh, social networking, digital presence, as well as contributes to intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Fostering social networking, it contributes to social enrichment or social wealth. It also increases the ability to communicate, share ideas and thoughts. If, if individuals needed so, some type of help or support, um, using technology offers that to where individuals who are more likely to be embarrassed or to ask questions or too shy to ask questions, the learning platforms or the technologically based learning platforms offer them this benefit. However, um, there has been some studies that to suggest that because a lot of um, students and teachers already use technology for the purposes of social networking, where it's mainly social media um, networks, they kind of blur the lines when it comes to using technology for social networking or for the purposes of entertainment or just learning or um, through the academic experience itself. Evidence to show that individuals have learned while using technology, the grades do not necessarily predict that students have learned with technology. Grades can be, a student can reach, have high grade levels with or without technology. So technology does not predict that they have learned. However, to show that students have learned curriculum when it comes to learning with technology for the purposes of collaboration and for uh, communicating and also for networking themselves, their experiences will show up in their behaviors, attitudes, how they think, questions that they ask, and things like that, and how they apply it to um, academic experiences, whether it be internal or external. It can also uh, increase their ability to have a sense of uh, a sense of flow. It contribute to their meaningfulness. They will have positive attitudes or dispositions. Some of the limitations related to this research is that it has been it was only it was solely based on previous works of literature that contributed to how learning with technology um, influences personal well-being and also contributes to uh, well-being itself. To where everyone strives to have a sense of well-being, whether it be from a personal perspective. But, uh, Per, uh, professional or academic experiences. Uh, the information provided uh, is not generalizable to a given population. Researchers should take the information a step further to show how learning with digitized platforms for the purposes of collaboration and social networking, they can use it from a quantitative perspective to where they um, develop very different variables to show if there is a relationship between different variables. They can take a qualitative or phenomenological approach. They can also take a diversified approach to where it, it, it be, it's all inclusive and as well as uh, including various demographics such as age, race, and culture and environmental factors. Again, to conclude, uh, we talked about the theoretical foundation, which is based on Martin Seligman's well-being theory of happiness to, have, to show how a lot of individuals strive for an increased level of happiness where they rather engage in uh, activities that are that, re that has reduced barriers and, reduced, and reduced costs. Um, we talked about the theoretical foundation in, re in reference to supporting the model to where using technology uh, for the purposes of collaboration and social uh, networking uh, does have the potential to increase um, overall well-being, happiness. It does play a role in collaborating, where to where mobile smartphone technologies allow students to collaborate within and external the academic um, environment. Um, it fosters social networking, to where students have the ability to communicate with other students, um, whether they be uh, local or if they're international. It still remains unclear to show how students have learned with technology to where it's not necessarily based on grades, it's more, it's more so based on having the students find a state of flow, some type of balance where the, the information that they have learned, it'll show up in their attitudes, their behaviors, their conversations, and how they um, respond to situations, internal and external, the academic setting.